viewpoints on the talk station FM 107 AM 1240. As I noted a few moments ago, we're going to be continuing our conversation about the work and efforts and success of Congressman Walter Jones. And um, uh, as I commented uh, a few minutes before we uh, went to that break, uh, a lot of the news releases and the uh, columns and the comments and the accolades uh I'm sure somewhat of a surprise uh, to the congressman in light of the fact the numerous criticisms he received. But there are some folks in our area who really appreciate the work that the congressman has done. As I prepare to bring them on, I just want to make note, if you go to the website for Congressman Walter Jones, the late Congressman Walter Jones, you'll see a picture of him, a flag, a lighthouse. Of course, that is the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Um, and which represents really kind of the northernmost edge of his uh, district. And then um, some horses. And those horses have relevance. And to explain that relevance, I've asked two folks to join us this afternoon. First, let me introduce and welcome Carolyn Mason, uh, founder of the Shackford Horses, and, uh, pardon me, Foundation for Shackford Horses. And with that, Carolyn, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Do appreciate your time. And joining us as well, Margaret Poindexter. She is the president of the Foundation for Shackleford Horses. And M Margaret, good evening to you as well. Good evening to you. Thanks for taking the time to be with us for both of you. Uh, I called earlier today, Margaret, and um, asked Carolyn if she would uh, join me on the air. Uh, she was very hesitant, <laughs> uh, almost <laughs> resistant uh, to doing so. And um, then she called back after I cajoled her and she said, OK, but about Margaret Poindexter. And uh, she said that she had called you because she needs some support in this conversation, which I think, <laughs> well, it, 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 it also is poignant. And, and I think this is important as as uh, Carolyn, as I just mentioned a moment ago. And by the way, Margaret, do, I do thank you for being the support here. We both will help her through this because I know this is a big issue for Carolyn. Carolyn. Let's talk for a moment about those horses as photographed in the uh, congressman's website. They're significant. They, you have something to do with those horses, do you not? Yes, I'm part of the Foundation for Shackwood Horses. I was one of the founders. Uh -huh. It took a lot of people working together. Uh, you hear my name a lot because nobody wanted to speak publicly, so they always push me out there. Right. <laughs> but uh, I'm not the only one that worked really hard and uh, basically uh, provided information for Cong Congressman Jones, who loved these sources. The first time I ever talked to him, and I'm not a political animal, I voted, and that was it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had a chance to talk with him when he was in Havelock years ago. And, what was, and told what was him the, our concern about the horses, and I'll never forget. He said, I learned about those horses in fourth grade. I'm going to look into this, and, of course, the rest is history. And also, fourth grade, I think, is when they start teaching North Carolina history. All right. Um, now, Carolyn, what was the impetus? I mean, what was the concern? What was, what was the concern you had related to these horses? <clears throat> there was a plant. Well, I grew up with them. I'm old enough to kind of remember a roundup on Corbanks. Mm -hmm. I remember them. Yep. And, uh, but I, you know, everybody down here, I loved them. I loved to see them. It was so, it's one of the few places where you hear gulls cry and waves break and you see wild horses. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's quite an experience. And, uh, part of a plan at the time was to reduce the herd on Shackleford to 50 horses, birth control the adults, and check back on a five year plan. Mm -hmm. So, some of us crawled up on the bar stools in my kitchen and called some of the top equine scientists in the country. And they said, that's not enough horses. They'll just disappear. Oh, really? So mm -hmm. in essence... And so at that point, we started working to keep a recommended uh, genetically viable herd on the island. You know, th this is something, and, and people I know, and, and they these horses roam, uh, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Carolyn, these horses can be seen over on um, uh, Sugarloaf Island there in, in uh, Beaufort, can they not? We're not sure. Those horses are not part of the group because, okay. All right. uh, well, for, for one thing, not Sugarloaf, Carrot Island. Carrot Island, I'm sorry, yeah, wrong town, right. wrong that's town, the yes. State, that's yeah. the state... Um, controlled area uh -huh. and they haven't had problems with the horses and Shackleford was federal and so we 
we basically got into the federal, and I can't tell you that much about the Carib Island horses. Okay. I just was wondering, because we have folks, of course, who always love to uh, drive up and down Front Street in Beaufort and pay attention to those horses. And, of course, these horses are, are also seen on Shackleford Banks as well as Core Banks, are they not, Carolyn? Not Core. Not anymore. Uh, they're, they're, the, the Outer Banks herds are Shackleford, Ocracoke, and Corolla. Oh, wow. To, now, these horses are able to swim. Do they make it over to Core Banks at all? They normally won't challenge channels and okay. tides. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's Carolyn Mason with us, and, of course, one of the founders of the Foundation for Shackleford Horses and uh, the role that this played in, uh, or the, actually the role that Walter Jones played in this. Um, before I get to you, Margaret, one other question for you, Carolyn. Uh, the congressman really had to go to bat for this. I mean, there was there was contention, was there not, over the uh, disposition of these horses? Yes, and uh, you know, it was it was sort of like a little local group versus a government agency. Mm-hmm. And um, but we, I'm a retired librarian. I ran libraries for the Navy and the Marine Corps for 30 years, and my job was to start documenting the history on these horses, and it's fascinating. And we were giving this information to Congressman Jones. And in the meantime, um, probably the top geneticists in the country uh, had got blood samples on these horses and said they're old and they're important. They're, they're recognized now by equine scientists and all over the country as colonial Spanish. Wow. We're talking with Carolyn Mason and, again, the work that uh, Congressman Jones did to uh, maintain a historic and very relevant aspect of coastal North Carolina. Also joining us, Margaret Poindexter, currently the president of the foundation. And, Margaret, let's talk here for a moment about, you know, the the historic relevance, but also the support going forward. Uh, Tell us something about the foundation and the work you're doing and, uh, you know, how easy is it to maintain uh, the support for these horses? Sure, and thanks for giving us this opportunity, Lockwood. I think touching, though, first on something Carolyn spoke to about Congressman Jones' support, I think it's important for people to realize that what he did was actually unprecedented. The legislation that he introduced amended the enabling legislation that created Cape Lookout. And so what it did, in addition to charging the Park Service with the responsibility for the lighthouse and the turtles and the birds and the beaches, was that they also now are charged with the responsibility of maintaining that herd and maintaining it in a genetically viable number. And that had never been done to the Park Service before and, to my knowledge, hasn't been done since. So he set up the protection and the preservation of that herd, but then the legislation also designated that the foundation, a nonprofit group, would be the co-managers of that herd Mm -hmm. with the Park Service going forward. So he created this relationship that we have now uh, in that legislation, and we uh, have developed through that process, uh, a memorandum understanding and a management plan with the Park Service, and we work together with them uh, to maintain the herd at genetically viable numbers. That includes, uh, you know, birth control if necessary, removals of horses if the herd gets too large for the island to maintain it. Um, We offer horses that we remove for adoption. We have taken some horses that we removed from the island to Cedar Island Mm -hmm. so that those horses can remain in a similar environment and remain in the wild. Um, And we, um, you know, continue to work with them and adaptively manage that herd and, and donations that come to the foundation, because, again, we are a 501c3, um, are used to help those efforts. And we use it for DNA testing. We Mm -hmm. use it for pregnancy testing. We use it to maintain the horses that we remove from the island. Um, We have a horse that's in quarantine and has been for over 20 years, and we've used it to maintain the horses in quarantine. So um, all of the donations go directly to the horses. We don't have any paid staff. We are all volunteers. And people like Carolyn (laughs) and others have been involved in it since the very beginning. Um, over 20 years ago. So um, we we feel very uh, grateful 
that Congressman Jones took this to heart, that he um, saw the concerns of the local people, his constituents. He saw um, the lack of responsiveness and lack of respect from a government agency. And so he went forward with this effort, and he was very passionate about it. I like to say, too, that um, it didn't hurt that his wife is a horsewoman, okay. Joanne. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so uh, she, she no doubt nudged him along. Um, but, but he is one of those people who clearly, uh, if you knew him, and I knew Walter for, um, <laughs> for 36 years, um, it, he has a passion for all God's creatures. Right. And, um, well, and, and, so, he, and he, can be, he can be very dogged in his approach to things. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to remember, I think he even had conducted a public hearing down here in which he had the um, Park Service uh, in attendance to hear the concerns. Am I correct on that? Carolyn? There was a public hearing um, yeah. about the management plan. Right. Uh, initially, the park held a, a public hearing, uh-huh. um, and yeah. then and Carolyn he also then of course had subsequent meetings. But he was very um, disappointed is not a strong enough word <laughs> uh, about the uh, the way the park superintendent at that time. Um, responded uh-huh. to the concerns of the local people and and that motivated him as much as anything i will say <laughs> yeah uh. <laughs> I, I i vaguely recall you know I, I i don't want to keep both of you too much longer Let, let's look forward here for a moment margaret what is the future of uh, the organization the foundation for shackleford horses um it, is it is it doing well and are you uh is there is there growing awareness on the value of these horses and, and the historic relevance we uh, we are healthy financially. Uh, we okay. grow a little bit every year. Um, of course, every little bit helps. We receive some grants, but we primarily operate off of individual donations. I will tell you that social media has been a blessing. Uh-huh. Um, it, it has allowed us to reach a lot of folks who are not local mm-hmm. and, and spread the word about the organization and um, encourage people to take an interest in these horses, which which people do. People are enamored, as Carolyn mentioned, enamored with wild horses. And oh, this yeah. place is unique well, now in, in, with, that, so. in that. In that regard, I've got a quick question for you. And I don't know who would answer this, but in comparison to the Chincoteague uh, horses on uh, Assateague, um, I'm wondering, is there any, any um, DNA connection whatsoever? Do either of you know by any chance? What, they're what they're considered colonial Spanish. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm go, sorry, go ahead, Carolyn. Yeah. Go ahead, Carolyn. What Gus Coffrin told us, because the, as I said, the Shackleford, Ocracoke, there are some Shackleford horses at Cedar Island uh-huh. on the Outer Banks at Shackleford, Ocracoke, and Corolla. And what the uh, geneticist told us was that the, the wild horses on the Outer Banks mm-hmm. are more like each other than any other breed. Wow. That's In other words, they're, each yeah. herd, there's a little difference because the isolation, but, right. but they are all uh, recognized as North Carolina biker horses. Interesting. Uh, and then, of course, uh, as, we, as we focus today on this, this is, this is the result of uh, the work that I've done locally. Let, let me give credit here right out of the gate for you, Carolyn, and others who um, <clears throat> we have not mentioned, and Margaret Poindexter with us, the president of the Foundation for Shackleford Horses, uh, the fact that locals had, had the, um, you know, the, the commitment to salvage these horses, to protect these horses, but you found a willing supporter in Washington, D.C., and Congressman Jones. And uh, as we wrap it up with that com- comment, Carolyn, I know that uh, you thought a lot of the congressman. Yes, he was, well, I read something uh, today that reminded me of him, Mm -hmm. and it said, well done, good and faithful servant, and he was a good and faithful servant to his God and his people, and I don't think you can do any better than that. I'll leave it at that. Margaret? Thank you very much for being with us, Margaret Poindexter, again, president of the Foundation for the North, for Carter, pardon me, Foundation for Shackford <laughs> Horses in Carteret County. I'll get that out. By the way, what's the website, Margaret? Thank you. Um, we don't have a website, Ooh. but you can follow us on Facebook. Okay. Um, we, we are on Facebook. 
So. Okay, and the, what, that would be just Shackleford Horses? Foundation for Shackleford Horses. Foundation uh-huh. for, all right. Margaret, thank you very much for your participation today and your leadership in this. And Carolyn, above all, thank you for your commitment at the outset and for all those uh, volunteers that uh, worked on this. Thank you both for being with us this afternoon. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Our pleasure. All right. That again was Margaret Poindexter and also uh, Carolyn Mason. You're listening to Viewpoints here on the talk station, uh, FM 107, AM 1240. Stay with us here for more. We're going to continue this coastal focus here on the congressman's uh, investment in North Carolina. 